Welcome everyone to BizHack Live. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder and CEO of BizHack Academy and the host of BizHack Live. And I'm very happy that we have this uh, special bonus session. We knew, normally have our BizHack Lives on Wednesdays, but we're very lucky uh, to welcome the amazing Cheryl Cattell, who's going to be talking about using LinkedIn to build your business without spending a dime. Uh, she'll be joining us shortly. Um, I wanted to take a minute uh, while we have some time to talk to you about some of uh, the upcoming sessions we have and the sponsors who make BizHack Live possible. Um, South Florida Integrated Marketing Association, one of the oldest marketing associations in South Florida, uh, is as Cheryl is the founder of the South Florida IMA, and they've been uh, an amazing supporter of us for a long time. Uh, the American Marketing Association, we actually won an international award for BizHack Live. This is our 51st BizHack Live that we've had, um, and we're so uh, thrilled uh, to be able to, to welcome you all to it. Creation Station Business, it's the Fort Lauderdale, uh, it's, it's the Broward County Library. It's a co-working space and a, a destination for a lot of business owners uh, and a great um, uh, uh, service to the community. The Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program, I uh, myself an alumnus uh, of that program um, and CIC, which is a co-working space in Midtown Miami. It's uh, really great. Uh, to have you guys all here today. So I wanted to take a minute um, and welcome um, one of my uh, co-lead instructors for uh, BizHack, uh, Alex Oliveira. Alex, welcome. It's great to have you here today. Uh, nice to be here. Welcome, everybody. So um, as part of like BizHack's week of uh, amazing events, uh, tomorrow uh, we have an event uh, that's on speaking blunders. And then uh, after that, Alex and I are going to be presenting a workshop on business storytelling at 2 p.m. It's kind of one of our favorite uh, signature events, and we're really excited uh, that you guys are hopefully going to be able to join us for that as well. Um, at that session, Alex and I are going to talk about something called the lead building system, which is uh, really the, the core uh, of marketing uh, the BizHack way. It's something that we developed over seven years with 700 small businesses. And the foundation of the lead building system is your business story, which is what we're going to be workshopping together in that Thursday session. Then there are the six pillars and the nine steps. And this lead building system is the subject of a seven week program that Alex is the lead instructor of, uh, which starts on July 12th. And so, uh, and Cheryl Cattell is one of our uh, longtime marketing coaches uh, for that program. So if it is something that you're interested in, um, we would love to uh, have you apply. Uh, there's an application process and interview. A number of the folks uh, who are here today have been through that program, Ruth Ann Smith, Armando, um, uh, and we uh, are really proud of the program um, and one that um, we've gotten some really extraordinary results about. Um, Jennifer Charles, uh, welcome. Great. We just were speaking on the phone. Thank you for jumping in here today and, and to all of you. Um, uh, for for being here today. So um, before we get to, to Cheryl, um, I did want to uh, ask you guys, uh, as a ground rules, uh, this is uh, an interactive session. There's a QA, and a um, uh, or you can actually put your questions in the chat, um, and I will be monitoring that. And, um, and so if you have any questions as Cheryl is going, you know, please feel free to uh, to put them in the chat, and I'll make sure that you guys um, have a chance to, to get those questions heard. Um, and uh, afterwards, we will share the slides and a link to the recording um, and so that you can you know, feel free to watch it again uh, and share it with others. Uh, and then we post this on our YouTube channel as we have all of our BizHack Lives, all 51 of them. And so we welcome uh, you guys to um, watch it there. So uh, without further ado, Cheryl, it's great to have you here, Cheryl. Welcome. Hey, Dan, how are you? <laughs> Good. So uh, Cheryl is the founder of Personal Legend Coaching, um, which is a life coaching business that she's founded and leveraged all of her marketing prowess uh, to, to grow uh, incredibly in the, 
in the uh, and, and to run. She has more than 25 years of digital marketing experience as a former VP and CMO of marketing. Um, she's currently a senior digital marketing strategist at Starmark International, one of the top marketing agencies in South Florida. She's the founder of South Florida Interactive Marketing Association, SAFIMA, on which I'm a board member, um, and a certified marketing coach for BizHack and a certified master certified life coach. And uh, just on a personal level, you know, Cheryl has been uh, an incredible friend and resource and colleague in this journey that we've taken together to uh, grow our businesses and, and learn how to market and help many, many small businesses with their marketing. So without further ado, uh, the amazing Cheryl Cattell, welcome. Hey, Dan, thank you so much. Um, had, just had a little um, fun there trying to get in. So I apologize. I was here 15 minutes early and you know that about me. Um, anyway, I'm excited to be here today. And I think, Dan, you did a great job of uh, kind of laying the, the foundation. I don't put myself out as a LinkedIn expert. I just know a lot more than the average Joe. And I'm somebody who loves to share and loves to, you know, like give the inside scoop on things. So that's what I'll be doing today. Um, this is a follow on from a great program that Debbie Weems did uh, uh, February, oh no, excuse me, May 12th. And she really covered the reasons why LinkedIn matters and I'm not going to cover that. Uh, what I did is I took those slides out and some of the profile tips that she gave you. So if you feel like you're leaving and you want more, I encourage you to go look at Debbie's um, presentation from um, May 12th. So with that said, um, I think Dan said it all right here. Um, I've been in digital since back in the day of LexisNexis. Um, I've worked for Bank of America, Travelocity, Mary Kay, eDiets, you name it. Um, I'm also an adjunct instructor uh, for a couple of wonderful uh, universities, um, and I'm even a guest speaker here at FAU. And um, I had the great joy of working overseas for four years with Dow Corning. I worked in Belgium, Brussels, Belgium. So um, this is kind of the outline. Uh, for those of you who saw this presentation, I don't know, when was it? Maybe six months ago? I can't believe, I actually, I logged in again today and um, LinkedIn has changed again today. So now I'm in create, creator mode. I'm a creator. I've been invited as a creator and I've got the ability to put things in my profile that I've never seen before. So um, it, this changes every week. Uh, so we're going to talk about what your score is and um, that's your social selling index. We're going to talk about your connection strategy and ways to grow. Then we'll cover some content strategy and Alex has asked me to add LinkedIn stories. I have used them, not a big fan, sorry Alex, but I will talk about them so that everybody is fully informed. And um, then my favorite part is to talk about LinkedIn post algorithms. And if you're going to take the time to put together content and post it, you want the most people's eyeballs on it as possible. So um, I'm going to share with you some things that have worked really well for, for me. And then um, we'll talk a little bit about LinkedIn events. And uh, there you have it. So Lilia, if you don't mind, um, I'd like to just get a feeling for the group here how often you post on LinkedIn. And if those of you who saw the invitation to this event, I asked this on the invitation to get engagement. So I'm gonna say that having a poll on LinkedIn is a great way to engage people. So um, I do encourage you use the polling uh, feature. As a matter of fact, I think, no, I took it down. The, it, I was gonna show you what it looks like, but it's pretty cool. Um, and it's Cheryl, a are you able to are you able to see the results uh, or am I only I am I am but no one else can so I think we've got 78 percent almost 80 percent so let's share the results um, so a lot of us are fans of uh, the beer the blue moon and um, what I would encourage you is uh, especially the nevers um, is to try to up your game a little bit if you really want to get serious about the um, about LinkedIn as a connection strategy. Um, posting and talking in a cocktail party is, a, is definitely the way to make connections. And so I will encourage you to say something more than once in a blue moon. So 
Now, some of you may say, well, wait a minute, I'm not looking for a job. Why should, what, why does LinkedIn matter to me? And so what I want to emphasize to you is that LinkedIn is, is like this giant ongoing social networking event that is, it's, it's just so rich. It is, it has um, everything in everybody that you probably want to connect with. Um, what, what it was the, the statistics I, I saw was uh, something like 75% of all jobs in the United States are listed on LinkedIn. But in addition, the number of companies, uh, something like 200 million companies, um, and all of the, the people that are associated with those companies are out there just waiting for you to find them. I mean, think of it that way. So we're gonna, one, one thing I'm going to suggest is that you wanna get your profile house in order because first impressions do matter. If somebody, you wanna establish yourself as somebody that's trusted that you can demonstrate some expertise, you wanna be able to gain somebody's confidence and you want them to be really clear about what it is you can do and how you can help them. So that's why posting and commenting and providing content is a way you can show some thought leadership. So this is something I'd like to um, have those of you in the audience. Just, um, I think, uh, Lilia, can you put that in the chat? And I'm going to encourage everyone to click on the link in the chat. This is something that all you need to do is to be logged into uh, LinkedIn. And if you go to this page, you'll see this, you won't see this red box. Okay, I put, I've added that, that's a editorial edition. That's what you want to click on, get your score free. And as soon as you have your score, if you wouldn't mind sharing that in the chat, I'd like to see uh, some of your scores. I am sharing with you mine right now on the screen. So I'm only 75 out of 100, but um, I'd like to hear if you could put in the chat, anybody got a score? Yes, Alex, 78, 18, 67, lots of room for growth. Yeah, Debbie, of course, I would not expect any less. Dan, 71, uh-huh, Oren, 59, 58. Excellent, excellent. Let me tell you how you can interpret this. Um, what is important on this screen is really the top two boxes. Hopefully right under here, you'll see something called the industry ranking. And so what that is, is that's my ranking. I'm in the top 1% of everyone in the advertising, marketing, and digital field. So in my industry, I'm in the top 1%. Now I hang out with some pretty, pretty savvy people. And so I'm only in the top 3% of my network. So these are the people that I have connections with. And so compared to them, I'm in the top 3%. So these are the numbers really that matter um, because when I saw 75 out of uh, 100, I was like, wait a minute, I'm more than a B student uh, or B minus even. So um, I, I do encourage you to take note of this number because after you, um, after we spend the next hour together, I'd love for you to put some of these things into place, come back and take your social selling index score again. I think you might be pleased hopefully um, with the results. So, all right, so i um, not gonna spend a lot of time on this. I'm just going to um, skip over to the things Debbie did not cover. Um, one of the things that I really think is pretty cool is this name pronunciation feature. Um, and that is really only, you can only get to this on a mobile app. Now you can see it and you can listen to how to say my name on the desktop. So for example, in this case, my name does get misspelled quite, quite frequently, especially by my friends in India. So I recorded my pronunciation as Cheryl Cattell. And that hopefully will alleviate or give someone the opportunity to not call me Cheryl Cattle. So um, I do encourage you to use this feature if you have a name that's somewhat difficult. I'll show you an example of one by Chris Reams, um, which is an excellent use of the, this feature. Now, if your name is John Smith, then you have a 30 second infomercial. You have the ability to put an elevator speech as part of your um, profile. And so I do encourage you to do that. 
Um, one other thing I would recommend is once you get your profile in order, you'll want to make sure it's um, optimized both on desktop and mobile. So just go to LinkedIn, click on your little face, look at your um, profile on both devices. Um, Debbie gave a great demonstration on how to get rid of the numbers after your name. I won't go into that. But as you can see, um, you do have the ability. Um, I just switched now. You see my profile header is really are pictures of things that have meaning to me. So for those of you who may not know, Romeo Brito is here on the right. This is one of the marketing awards from the Hospitality Sales and Marketing Association. And then this is one of my favorite uh, chanters. So um, then what I did is when I joined Starmark, I put this logo, transparent logo on, and it ties in nicely with my current position. And so that's one way that you can sort of personalize and yet also be part of something. And unless you're looking for a job, I highly recommend that you promote your, your, your company, your product, using this space on your pro personal profile. The other thing Debbie did a great job was, is that you can edit this. This comes up um, automatically with your current title and current company. And I do highly recommend that you edit that. And again, um, I always like to add something that says, this is what I do. I help people become a star in their own life. So no great, nothing, no, nothing too grand there. Um, anyway, so this is one thing, this is a big no-no. It's the poorest use of real estate. This is like having a billboard on I-95 for those of us here in South Florida and having nothing on it. So I do recommend that you don't waste this space. And Canva, I think Debbie gave a good example of how to do that. One other thing I would say is don't use, um, don't use uh, unprofessional shots. Like for example, if you're at a party, a cocktail party and there's drinks involved, um, I highly recommend that you remove the background on uh, any photo. Actually, I think even Brian should remove this light here because it's very distracting. I'm trying to figure out where is he, what is that? And there's a great app that's free. Uh, you just go to remove.bg and um, you can upload your photo and remove it and it takes less than 30 seconds and it will improve the professionalism of your um, profile. Um, some other options are you can have uh, companies, if you are a, a business owner, I recommend that you provide uh, your employees opportunities to personalize their, their profile, but yet also give a nod to your company and what you do. So for example, Starmark, we're all about virtual meetings now, meetings and virtual reality. And so in this case, um, each one of us has the ability to have a picture of us with the virtual headset on, virtual reality headset, and it ties back to our branding and our company, one of our company missions right now. So that is something that you can offer as a business owner, and I do highly recommend it. Another great thing about having the company involved is you can see here um, when we, we were hiring a, a social media strategist, um, having this on my personal profile page, for one, I have a lot more connections on my personal profile page than I think even Starmark may have. But if you see this and it's you're someone I know and you see that we're hiring, that's almost as good as a, a referral, right? Because you know who I am, You then you probably know a little bit more about the company and then seeing this and then being able to apply right on online is one of the best ways to hire good people that are a good match culturally. So this is um, something, uh, another reason why it's good to have the company involved, especially if you're um, hiring. So another thing you can do with these, uh, with your top profile is you can pr promote products, you can pr promote um, events that are coming up. And you can change this as often as you'd like. I'm gonna actually um, probably click off here. Let's see what's the next one. Yeah, um, I wanted to show you some really nice, uh, I guess, profile headers. And Debbie, one of them is yours. So I think I'm going to do that right now. Let's see, can I, I guess I have to stop share and then share again. It drives me crazy about Zoom. It's not smart enough to, here it is. Uh, yeah, no, that's PowerPoint screen. There it is. Okay. 
I wanted to, um, yeah, see, I was really trying to get in uh, several times. Okay, so I wanted to share with you, um, this is one that, oh, I don't know if I, hold on. Oh, I hate this. I'm so sorry. I want to make sure, no, I did not share my sound. This one, you do need the sound because I wanted you to hear what the, um, the, the introduction or the voice sounds like, and I don't see it today. Aha. Okay, it's not there today. There it is. Okay, good job. All right, so this is where I was telling you, you could um, put your name pronunciation. Chris Ream. Just think of it like Phonics, Arizona. I'll never forget how he pronounces his name again. <laughs> Do you see how this could be um, powerful? Because I'm obviously he gets called Chris Rome a lot. All right, so let me, Debbie, since you're in the audience, um, I think this is a great use of the personal profile space, this, this banner. Um, to promote what it is that she does. And she is a LinkedIn specialist, so I have no problem promoting her services here. Um, this one is kind of interesting. This is actually one of my clients. I do one-on-one um, -on -one sessions with people who um, want to improve their profile and their strategy. And Susie came to me because she says, no one can find me. Um, first of all, nobody knows how to spell my name and everybody spells it differently, and I spell it differently based on where I'm at. So I wanted to show this one because after the first name, you can put um, any pronunciation or any spelling that you like. And when she wasn't coming up with S-U-S-I lens, now she does. So this was kind of a really cool um, tip that I wanted to share um, for those of you, especially with, um, what do you call it, uh, maiden names and, spelling of names that, is, that are very difficult. All right, um, this one, actually, this was a, a student of mine who graduated and was looking for, looking for help getting a job. And um, uh, he wanted a job in basketball. So um, we found a picture that really says what his passion is and what it is he wants to do. So I like to share that one. And then finally, um, uh, Cindy, I show hers because she has a nice use of emojis. And I'll give you a, a location, if we get to it, I'm gonna to try to go fast, um, at the end where you can go and put whatever it is you want into, um, you know, a, like in her in case, the name, and then be able to copy and paste it into LinkedIn and show up as emojis or as different size or type font, et cetera. So, all right, so that was just a little um, trip down uh, LinkedIn lane. Uh, that I thought would be kind of fun. So, all right, so back to our regularly scheduled program. All right, the next session section, this is your keyword rich area. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here. Debbie did a great job. Um, I just encourage you to use first person and use all of your keywords. Anything that you're trying to um, sell or try to be found for, and the only thing I would say is if you're in business and you want to get business, if it sounds like a resume, take it out. So what you're trying to do is tell people what your core competencies are, what are the industries that you're experienced is, what you're really passionate about, et cetera. But if it sounds like you're looking for a job and you're not, look, take it out. So the other thing that you can do is for some of us, we've been around a little too long to want to show all of our jobs in um, on the on the LinkedIn page. So here I listed related job experience without going back as far as it went. Um, but this shows kind of more breadth uh, of my experience and then technical skills. Another thing which I wish I could put on here that I work with international clients and we always add languages here. Um, I usually put it in between the related job experience and technical skills. Um, and I'm always embarrassed because, you know, five to seven languages is nothing for my international clients and I'm just so jealous. So, all right. There is a, another section that you can add to your profile, which is called featured. And by the way, about me is not a standard section. You have to go and add it at the top of your profile. It will say um, add section. So these are some sections I'm going to encourage you to add. Um, so 
I see the featured section as something like an end cap in a store. Like when you're going down the public's aisle and you at the end, there's this beautiful display of Coca-Cola, you know, and the, and the next upcoming event when I need to stock up. That's really what this featured section is about. So here you can see I've shared an article um, this, that, that um, appears in Resort Trades magazine. I have a tips sheet. I highly recommend everyone invite you. Uh, what I've done is taken some of the highlights of this presentation and put them in a PDF with a check mark. So you can print it out and go down the list and check it off as you as you add it. And then also I had a link to one of uh, a webinar that I had given. So these are some of the things, articles, announcements, videos. These are all great things for the end cap. All right, let's switch uh, gears a little bit. Now I'd like to talk to you about connecting. So once, and I'm assuming you're here because you want to grow your business, and I'm going to tell you everything I'm telling you, I've, I either do it myself or, and it's free. And so until you're using, I know this, I'm going to have this question, should I pay for premium? Should I pay for sales navigator? I'm just going to answer it right now. Not until you're leveraging the free tools 100%. And I think that um, Debbie gave us a great statistic, 94% uh, of all LinkedIn users use the basic. And so my advice to you is until you're fully leveraging free, don't, don't even think about it. You don't need it right yet. So what I would recommend that you do is for your connection strategy, go and look for associations or groups that you think would be where people that you're looking for might hang out. Request to join them. And once you become a member, go down the list of members and reach out to them and say, hey, we have this in common. Hey, we're in this group together. Hey, and just go through and, and, and find the people that have this, the shared interest in what your business does. The next thing I would do, and you can see, I'm showing this screen here on the right because this will not appear, this people, connections, locations, and companies, and all of these filters here on the side will not appear until you put something in the search box. Many people miss this feature and it is probably one of the most powerful parts about LinkedIn. So you can type in, in this case, John Smith. I then clicked all, all filters and then it will open up a list where I literally can go in and find target companies, target job titles, service categories like health, marketing, uh, whatever it, whatever service I'm interested in. So being able to conduct this search and then using the all filter option. And then the next thing is you start connecting. So in when you're connecting, um, I think Debbie said it too, always send a personalized note. Um, I always start with hi in their name. Remember that this is where we met or this is something we have in common. Let's connect, connect on LinkedIn and close. Do not ask, do not ask for anything more than that. Um, I'm showing on the right side here um, on the mobile version, they have this nifty little thing, which is the QR code. And this is better than carrying around business cards. You can click this when you're in a meeting and instead of giving somebody your business card or you could ask somebody to share with them, you your their QR code then you can actually scan them and connect with them in the meeting. Um, they used to have something called Nearby, which was a Bluetooth enabled connection. And um, I hear that that has gone by the wayside. So um, I used to have that here. Um, this is the next best thing. So connecting, 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 very important. Something else that I'm going, not, again, not very well known is um, clean up your invites. So what you want to do, if LinkedIn really frowns on having unaccepted invites out there. And there's three types of invites. People, so these are people that I've reached out to. And most of these I know, they work at Starmark, or these are people that I, you know, so you can see I only had a personal note. These are all people I know that are um, what I call LinkedIn laggards. They don't go in very often, but you can see they're all within one month. But I do go in every month and clean up my invites and I recommend you do that. The same thing with pages, people that you invite to follow your business page um, and events. If you invite people to events, some of you received an invitation from me to today 
And so that's where your, in, your unaccepted invites will live. And so you need to clean these up. Very important, all right? Um, so uh, the, only, the only downside is you won't be able to re-invite them for three weeks, but heck, if they haven't, after a month, they haven't accepted my invite, I don't think uh, three weeks, I can wait. All right, so this is um, all new. The, uh, something that's very, very common, it's called the pillar and cluster content strategy. So what I recommend is that you identify your goal for why do you want to connect with people on, um, you know, on LinkedIn. And then you establish what, what is your position? I want to be credible. I want to be credible. I want to be highly engaged, Johnny on the spot, the fastest to respond. Uh, I want to be entertaining. Um, I, I know this may surprise you, but my uh, accountant, uh, his goal in life is to make me laugh every time I have an interaction with him, including his voicemail, uh, including his emails. Um, so he has a position um, in a very crowded field how <laughs> to stand out. Um, or you could be provocative, uh, you know, asking really provocative questions that make people think. Um, not controversial, but provocative. Also, you want to focus on something that's unique to you so that you're not in a cluttered area. So something, so for me, um, my expertise is really more about LinkedIn as a way to, um, I guess, start your journey towards your, your life's purpose, right? So LinkedIn to life coaching is really my unique expertise um, because I love the life coaching and LinkedIn is just a way to get people thinking about what do they want to be when they grow up. So what I do recommend is you select two to four, maybe start with just one or two, and then you want to create this really huge, uh, what I call it, a comprehensive overview of a particular topic. And so, for example, and, and you want it to be good enough that Google wants to feature it. Now, I don't know how many of you have seen this, but when, here's an example, I Googled what you need to know about pillar and cluster content. And for good for Clarion, they are, they were selected by Google for no charge to feature their definition at the top of the search results. This is gold. No, actually, this is platinum. Uh, to be featured here is amazing, and it cost them nothing other than the investment in an article that was comprehensive, clear, and had all of the answers that somebody that put this question in would want. So this is a, a great example of a pillar article. And then what you do is you try to create uh, clusters around that, right? So hard hitting titles, right? Here's some good ones. What should my content pillars be? What is a content pillar page? What is content clustering? So those become the clusters. So you have the pillar and then around that are the clusters that interlink to back to your pillar and interlinked with each other. So this is what is um, recommended. Uh, so you're not, just churning out unrelated topics and unrelated articles or unrelated comments. You try to do something that really sets you apart and you build your foundation on this pillar. They also love when you have third party um, references or research, primary research is the best. And uh, I think that's, that's pretty good. We've talked about everything else. So here's some sample goals that you might, you might want to have. So you may wanna be about educating, you may wanna be helping. So these are some goals that you might set out before you decide what your pillars are. Um, you may be in the relationship building game. You may wanna drive sales, create referrals, build a personal brand, be discovered. So these are just sample goals that you might start out with and then go down from there. Here's another tip, and I'm actually going to give credit. Chris Reams uh, is the one that it, this was his mother load. Um, every single day, uh, he sells insurance, by the way, but I think he makes more money uh, talking about LinkedIn. But every single day when he was with a client, he would write down one question or one problem that he would solve with them. 
Now, it didn't have to have anything to do with insurance. Maybe they asked him, you know, uh, what's the best place to get my hair cut, for goodness sakes. So um, if he was able to solve a problem for them, uh, he would literally write about it. He would have a post and say, hey, you know, somebody asked me today, where's the best barber or where's the safest barber uh, for COVID? He would literally share that. Um, but then he started getting into having these little vignettes, videos of uh, questions that he would get from his clients. And then he was able to go into a little bit more depth and, you know, even show some screenshots. Well, you know, if you're looking for whatever you're looking for, here's where I would start, start the process here. And it didn't have to have anything to do with insurance. And that's the important thing because LinkedIn is, is not, it's, it's really a social media channel. And you don't come up to somebody in a social media in a social meeting and say, "Hi, I'm Chris Raymond. I sell insurance. How much insurance do you do? You have term life? Do you have long term long term care? Do you have?" No, <laughs> right? What he found is by doing this, he could literally get his phone to ring, and people would buy insurance from him, and then at the end say, "Oh yeah, by the way, I love your videos." He had no idea. And so how many people had he been able to engage with, to build trust, to have some confidence with them, to make them pick up the phone when they needed insurance? And that's, that's the name of the game. That's really what makes this social platform tick, right? So, so again, make sure you're engaging. Engage way before you start selling. Also, you want to be on the lookout for people that are in your industry or people that you're targeting to make sure you're reading their posts, right? You don't want to call somebody that's just won the 40 under 40 in, in South Florida and not even know that, right? I mean, this is just pay attention, be a good corporate citizen, engage with the people that you want to connect with. So the other thing you can do is you can tag these people or you can tag companies in any of the posts that you're doing. So you mentioned people um, with using at their name or at and the company name in your content. The other thing that's great is if you've got permission, you can say, we solved this problem for Kaiser Permanente, for example. And that is, it, talk about building confidence. I mean, okay, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. So another thing you do wanna do is, catch people doing great things and then celebrate that. That's, that's part of the social part. So here's some ideas, original content, comments on relevant articles, recognition kudos, personal and company accomplishments. The other trick I'm gonna suggest is try to respond to comments quickly. So if you've posted something, don't post and ghost. That's one of my new favorite. Uh, I remember back in the days, I'm going to date myself here, where um, AOL had a spray and pray uh, approach to marketing where they'd spray these discs out and people were using them as coasters um, and prayed. Well, the news saying is don't post and ghost, which means post and then disappear, right? You want to stay engaged with your audience. You posted that for a reason. You've gotten people to respond. So give them the, the, the honor of responding to their comments. So. All right. Um, I added this. I just thought this was, um, this Dan, this is a tip to BizHack Academy. You want to have a thumb-stopping headline? <laughs> um, and I just pulled this one out uh, just because poor Florida man uh, w was in the news again, Rachel Maddow talking about Florida man. And uh, I saw this and this got my attention, right? Um, but you do want to make sure the way you format your article, you want to have a very attention getting headline. And then I do recommend having like a sentence that is somewhat is kind of a featured first sentence that you can get the gist of the article from that and it kind of pulls them in. Like what you're trying to do is pull them into the article. Other thing that I do recommend if you're writing original content, make sure you put bullets, bold, um, you know, here the W is bolded. Um, people love statistics and numbers, and it also breaks up the visual, and they can kind of zoom down to that and say, oh, that's interesting. Let me read more. Um, and as I sh showed you at the beginning, if you have a poll or pose questions, it's a great way to engage your readers, right? And then I think I talked a little bit that you want to make sure you've got your 
top 10 keywords and always come back to that. Always come revisit how to get those keywords up. All right. Posting algorithms. Um, the lazy share a link post um, is what I'm showing you on the left. And this is what I used to do when I was at Nordis. I would put a little comment and say, oh, okay, yep, this is important. I put some hashtags, I put some at signs, and then I'd put a link to the article and it would just automate, it was like magic, right? It brings this beautiful picture in, it brings in the article, you click on it, you go see it and life is wonderful. If all I want is 100 people to see it, that's wonderful. If you would like to um, increase the people who see your post tenfold, um, this was my first experiment. experiment. I went from 100 to about 1,200. The next one I did was up to 1,500. And that the secrets are this. You want to put your text and an image in, a screenshot. You upload the image. Okay, this is not the lazy, the lazy man's approach. You want you you will have to upload your image. And it could be a screenshot of the article. It can be the the photo that is in the article. That's fine. The link to the article goes in the first comment. You see it down here. Read the article here. Now, if I clicked see more and I was on LinkedIn, it would say to read the full article, see the first comment below. Okay, you get the connection here. You want to put three to five profiles. So put my name, put, well, don't put my name, but put three to five people that you are trying to get their attention. And what that does is make sure that this, your article and your comments show up in their newsfeed. The same thing with companies. If you're trying to get the attention of somebody at Kaiser Permanente, then you would put that as one of your at signs. What that does is you're going to show up in the people who have that as their company. The next thing is you want to have three hashtags. Um, what was it? Uh, there's like 90% of all searches on LinkedIn are organic. And that's where these keywords come from, your hashtags, as well as the, um, the, the words in the article itself. So now the last thing you've got you've got this you're going to you're going to increase your views by tenfold the next thing you have to do is get five comments in 60 minutes go right and uh, i know you're going to ask this don't even put it in the question how in the world am i going to do that you know I, I i'm not in an office i can't get up and bug people and tell them go comment on my article all right so i'll give you a trick for that as well now, you're saying, why in the world do I have to go through all of this effort when this was so much easier? And the reason is that unless your article is on LinkedIn, when you put a link to an external website, LinkedIn will punish you and put your post further down in the newsfeed and it won't keep it in the newsfeed as long. So this is a robot that's going out there and it's saying, ah, this one on the right, they're not going anywhere. They're gonna stay here. I like this. I want the community. I want all of the dialogue to happen here. So it will be rewarded. The five comments in 60 minutes also tells the algorithm that this article is interesting and people are engaging with it. So let's go a little bit more up into this whole five people in 60 minutes. We have another poll. Lilia, if you don't mind. And the question is, have you ever used a LinkedIn pod? Ooh, we got some podsters. We got some podsters. About almost 30% of you. Wonderful. Oh, 20. Okay, we got some of them. Some, all right. Very good. Let's get up a few more. Let's, we got 66. Let's get to 70% and then we'll share. All right. I'm going to end and share the results. So 23% um, of you have you are have, have used a LinkedIn pod. So for those of you who haven't, which is the vast majority, so that's like oh, almost 80%, um, this next part will be interesting to you. So um, we're going to talk about pods. <laughs> what is a pod and why, why do I care? So there are LinkedIn engagement pods and they come together for different reasons. Most of them are built around people who want to help get 
comments on LinkedIn posts. Um, you can have up to 50, 20 to 30 is about ideal. And there is a reciprocated agreement of everyone in the pod that they will help each other. So for example, I would comment on your post and you will comment on mine. Even when I don't have a post, I still comment on yours. So you can create your own pod. And um, Lily, if you could put the Josh Steinle uh, article link in here. Josh goes through step by step what you need to do to create your own pod. If you would like to join a pod, I have room in a BizHack pod that I would be happy to add anyone who reaches out to me on LinkedIn. So first of all, we have to be connected so I can invite you. And then second of all, tell me in a direct message that you would like to join the pod and I will add you. Once you're added, you should establish rules and I will post our rules. We have um, our group uh, gets together Tuesdays and Thursdays from nine to 10. And then we all comment on each other's pod. That's the only commitment. Now, people post other times, but the commitment of the group is on Tuesdays and Thursdays, just those, those two times. Now, I'm going to tell you that there are pros and cons. Number one, it amplifies your reach. It does help you get more views. It does help you stay in the news feed. Actually, my favorite part of the pod is I get to keep up with what people are doing. I just am amazed at the things people are doing. Uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of like the water cooler for me. Um, it's also a great way to engage employees. So if your company has things that's going, that are going on that you'd like to elevate, create an employee pod because of course their job depends on the company being successful. They can go and tell their networks about it very easily using this, this, this approach. The cons. Superficial engagement is actually counterproductive. So if you're in a pod and you go in and say, nice post, thanks for sharing, you might as well say nothing because it really, it's very obvious that it's a pod comment and that you're not engaged and you don't really care. So it can hurt. Also likes don't count. Comments have to be genuine and you must comment. You can also like, but comments. It does take time to do it right. Um, I think I, I can do comments in about two minutes, uh, read the article and, and make a comment. And we even have some Spanish speakers in our pod. So I have to translate the article and make my comment then in English, I don't translate it. So um, officially LinkedIn has no position on pods. They don't endorse or, um, or, or say they're, uh, they're not endorsed. Um, they're sort of silent on it right now, but I've seen uh, many articles written on the LinkedIn uh, platform about pods, so they know they're out there. You're always better to have organic or genuine engagement. That's the best thing, and that's really where you want to go. But until you get there, it does help, and it will help you build that. All right, Alex, this is for you. I am going to give a disclaimer. I have used LinkedIn Stories. It is just was just launched a few months ago. Um, uh, it's only available on the mobile app and it's meant to be more like, you know, Instagram or Facebook Stories, casual, quick updates. You put a text, a photo or a video. It only stays there for 24 hours. Um, it's good for late breaking news, uh, live updates, water cooler, tidbits, tips. Etc. So this is what it looks like. Um, you can start a post and you can actually scroll down to share a story. Then you uh, upload a, a photo, a video, you can add stickers, you can add at signs, etc. You will be asked to grant access to uh, your camera video role. Um, then you go down and, uh, you know, share a story, you upload, you can, like I said, you can put at mentions here just like we talked about people's names or companies. Um, if you wanna to try to find it, you click this little X or plus sign next to your uh, profile image in mobile only. It's only available, you can only see it in mobile. Um, they were beta, beta testing in December with about 600 advertisers to use this platform. Now there's some information here on images and videos uh, restrictions. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I've used it, I don't like it, I don't use it now. 
So here's one that um, I posted, actually Pam Stein, for those of you who know her. Um, I got a whole four views. Um, I was uh, under impressed. All right. I want to get to some, I've got some uh, bonus material, so I'm, hope, I'm pushing to get there. Um, the best time to post, uh, really, you can see kind of the dark navy area here, you know, it's kind of Tuesdays to Fridays are really, really good. Um, you know, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. and this is Eastern, that is a question I get. Um, if you care, if you want to do something and post something that you get no engagement on, do it. Uh, any time between 9 p.m. and 3 a.m. I don't know why you'd want to know that. Okay. All right, LinkedIn events. Um, this event was posted on LinkedIn. The way you find events, and I don't know, for those of you who've gone to my network page, you will see events that have been curated and your event could show up here. And so this is a great way to, they're curating topics that, that somebody has um, reacted to or maybe um, attended in the past. So this is a wonderful way to potentially get people there that you may never be able to invite otherwise. Um, so you can invite your contacts. Um, we'll show you that. It's great because your invitees can accept with just one click. It does show up in your newsfeed. And as I said, it'll show up here on this page. And if you put co-host, then they can easily share it to their network. So um, that's what I did today. Dan and Lilia and Stephanie were added as co-hosts and that would have allowed them to do just one click share with their network. Um, there is something called LinkedIn Live. You have to apply to get it. You have to use a third party streaming service. They are very, very picky. Um, if you want to do it, it's amazing though, because when the event is happening, it will appear on, the, on whatever page your contacts are on saying, you know, Cheryl Cattell is going live. Um, it's definitely worth it, but very difficult to get. If you get declined or, or if they decline your or reject your application, keep going at it. I talked to somebody who did it four times. She didn't change anything. She just kept going back. So um, if you're doing events a lot, Dan, um, something worth um, investigating. I think it's uh, amazing. So the cons of LinkedIn events, you cannot force people to register. And if you're using a third party solution like Zoom or Eventbrite, you have to download, you can see here, attendee registrations, you download it and then have to upload it into that third party. There's no calendar reminder. And when you do download, there's a true false column, which means you can or cannot add them to uh, your CRM. So, all right. So, um, oh good, we got a few minutes to get into a little bit of uh, some of the hacks. The first thing you have to do, I'm saying this at the end so you don't forget, is before you start changing anything, go to your profile. It's this little me button. Right under view profile is settings and privacy. Go down to the visibility of your LinkedIn activity and make sure it says no. Otherwise, if it says yes, everything you change on your profile will be um, spammed out to your contacts. So you don't wanna do that. So then after you've turned off this share updates, then you can edit to your heart's content. All right, these are my quick, quick hacks. These are fun. These are just fun things I've discovered in the last few weeks. There is a cool place called coolsymbol.com and you can change the font on LinkedIn by going there. You put your message in, pick whatever way you want it to look, copy it, and then put it into a post or into your profile. That's how um, the one gal had the little emojis. That's where she got them. So I think that's really cool. The other thing that um, I just found out is you can change your um, connect button to say, follow me. And literally the same day I did that, I got an invitation to become a creator, which means um, it's you're somebody who's creating content on um, Facebook or Facebook. Sorry, sorry, Dan, I'm back in class uh, on LinkedIn. And so they want to give you more permissions. So this was kind of a game changer for me. I changed my button from connect to follow. And then I got I've gotten some other things opened up to me. The other thing that I want to recommend, you may have seen this, when you go to look at somebody, you'll see the, their competitors. 
listed. If you go to a company, it'll say people also viewed and it'll list your competitors or list people that are in the same industry as you. And you don't always want that. If you're using LinkedIn for business, you don't want competitors to appear. So there is this thing called, um, um, uh, what is it called? People also viewed right here. Again, same place. It's under profile information. Scroll down. People also viewed. Turn that off. That you don't want that. I, I that's just annoying. And then um, there's also this other cool thing. Again, just on mobile. You at the bottom of your mobile profile, you'll have the ability to. There's a pencil, and you can add things that people can reach out to you about. So for me, I'm saying mentoring, paid consulting, contracting, freelancing, et cetera. So this was just to give you an example of what that looks like. And that's where you find it. It's on the mobile app only. All right, I'm gonna say, be off with you and pick one thing, just pick one thing. Don't be overwhelmed, pick one thing and do it. If you're here in South Florida, I have a guy who will come to you with a mask and uh, gloves and he will do a professional headshot for $200. Um, add a personalized profile banner like we talked about give and get recommendations um, set a goal say i want 4500 connections by x date and then start working towards that improve your social selling score you've got it now and just make it go up you could start or join a pod or you could start posting uh, content every week and then, of course, the second thing you want to do is connect with me. So, Lily, why don't you put that in the chat? And if you want more, if you would like to keep this journey going, you have a couple of options. I do do one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. I normally charge $250. Um, for the next 10 days, you can sign up for $25 off. I'd be happy to work with you. And that's the link where you can uh, get the reduced rate. And then another thing that I've been doing, which I really am enjoying, is a four-hour intensive workshop where you and nine of your closest friends get together and we'll do hands-on editing of your profile. So kind of fun. And there's me in my virtual reality headset, and it has been my pleasure. Thank you very much, Dan, for this opportunity. Perfect. Um, thank you so much, Cheryl. Amazing presentation. Uh, Debbie uh, Weems, uh, a, a definite LinkedIn expert, mentioned that if you bold uh, the font in your LinkedIn profile, the LinkedIn search engine uh, won't um, index it. So don't bold your keywords, those key uh, phrases and words that you want to make sure that folks see you on. Um, um, Good tip. Folks thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. I, I wasn't aware of that one either. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, as far as BizHack, uh, as far as um, getting to be a li LinkedIn Live, we've applied a couple times with BizHack and haven't gotten it yet. So we're going to keep going. Uh, keep going. I talked to somebody who did it four times and didn't change a thing in their application. Finally yeah. got it. Um, so I wanted to wrap up by saying, first of all, thank you, Cheryl. Uh, amazing presentation. Um, BizHack uh, does work uh, with companies uh, with 10 or more employees uh, for a workforce training grant program. And so if you're interested, if you, if you work at or run a company with 10 or more employees, you're eligible uh, for up to $3,500 per employee in federal training grants that can be used for digital marketing training. And we'd love to work with you to help you apply for those. Um, we have an amazing lineup for the rest of season three of BizHack Live. Tomorrow, we're gonna be featuring the amazing Dave Bricker, uh, presentation coach talking about 52 speaking blunders. Uh, the week after that, we're going to talk about how to find a work-life balance from a female entrepreneur. 70% of people who take BizHack's program uh, are female entrepreneurs or women business owners. We're very proud of that and wanted to feature that uh, as a topic. Um, we're going to then talk again about LinkedIn in June. Uh, two secret ways to leverage LinkedIn to build rapport and generate new leads. This will specifically speak to Sales Navigator, an area of a lot of interest for folks in the B2B space. Um, we're going to be talking about the secret to unlocking profitable customer acquisition through Google with Jeff Cooper of Saltbox. Saltbox is BizHack's SEO firm, and Jeff is a, a, just a, a real uh, thought leader in the field. And we're going to also be talking about Google Analytics with Ben Holland. 
and three Fortune 500 marketing techniques that any small business can use. This is basically every Wednesday through uh, the end of the month, June. And if you wanted to support this amazing free programming and sign up for them all at once so that you don't have to worry about um, signing up for each one individually, we do encourage you to sign up for a season pass. Um, and then uh, finally, you know, all of this is uh, part of the BizHack uh, paid program, uh, which is our uh, seven week program. Cheryl is one of the instructors. Alex Oliveira is the lead instructor. And we're going to give you a sneak peek on Thursday at 2 p.m. Uh, a business storytelling workshop. This is an interactive session where you'll get to see the BizHack methodology and the lead building system in action uh, with uh, me, the founder, and uh, Alex, who's the lead instructor, and uh, the course that we have uh, starts on July 2nd, and would love for you all uh, to apply at bizhack.com slash apply now if you're interested in really taking your marketing to the next level. Uh, with that, thank you so much, Cheryl. Thanks to all of you guys for hey, taking Dan. time out of your business day.